hello and welcome back for another RC book list video. In this series, we're going to going through the entire RC book list, breaking it down a few books at a time, a few chunks at a time, and sharing with you the titles, what they're known for, the subject matter in them, what category they fall under the RC book list. And also I wanna start incorporating a little bit more, maybe some alternatives in case you can't find it or you can't print it or you're not very comfortable with that book title. And this video is sponsored, brought to you by the Robinson Curriculum. So please check them out. It is an extremely affordable way to homeschool your family. 195 K through 12 for your entire family, one-time purchase, and then you just have to purchase the math books. I can't imagine homeschooling any other way. It's sustainable and effective, but also really enjoyable. And if you love reading and you want to pass that on to your kids, you're going, you're going to love this curriculum. I cannot talk Bruh. today. <laughs> All right, we've got a lot to cover, but I'm not going to go too much over previous authors. I will leave a book list link down below and a card where you can watch the entire series. I really go more in depth the first time an author is mentioned. There are repeats, titles from the same authors in the book list, so that's why we won't spend too much time on it, just kind of go over what the book is about. So let's pick up where we left off last time. So number 61 is The Hound of Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle, and this is in the category of literature. In case you're brand new to the series, all the book lists on the book list kind of fall under, maybe it's poetry or literature, or social studies. So we cover a multitude of subjects through the book list. So this is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is from Barnes and Noble and it has the two parts in it. So it has the part one and then it has The Hound of Baskervilles. Now here's a little tip too, cause I noticed I have left this from a previous kid reading through it. Uh, I think a great tip, you know, so you don't have your kids asking you how much longer do I have to read or you know all of that a great little pacing mechanism is to just put a little sticky note tab at the end of their reading time so if you think they can comfortably read maybe two chapters three chapters depending on the book depending on the type how big are the chapters whatever you think they can handle you know leave a sticky note in those intervals so they know okay I'm done with this one when I get to the next sticky note, I'll be done with my RC reading for the day. And then if you have a certain time, maybe an hour to a two, but then if you still have a certain time limit, like you want them to read for a full hour, you know, once they get to the sticky note, then maybe you can let them read other books that you have in your library. So that's just a little aside tip there. So that is number 61. Now this is also, I have here the collection. This is the Sherlock Holmes collection. So if they like those types of mystery uh, novels, there's a lot more in the series. So The Hound of Baskervilles is actually number three in a four part series of murder mystery novels. They feature, of course, the detective of Sherlock Holmes, and it tells the story of an attempted murder inspired by the legend of a fearsome, diabolical hound of supernatural origin. Fun fact, this is one of the most famous stories ever written in 2003. The book was listed as number 128 of 200 on the BBC's Big Red Poll of the UK's Best Loved Novels. So it's it's up there. In 1999, a poll of Sherlockonians ranked it as the best of the four Holmes novels. So out of the four, this one's pretty up there. It's, it's listed as a favorite. And here's another little fun fact in case you didn't know this, but he had not written about Sherlock Holmes in eight years. He had actually killed off the character in the story, The Final Problem. Although The Hound of Baskervilles is set before those latter events, so sort of like a prequel. Two years later, Conan Doyle brought back Sherlock Holmes for good, explaining in The Adventure of an Empty House that Sherlock Holmes had faked his own death. So that's interesting. Seems like he regretted maybe killing him off and then uh, that was an interesting way to bring him back. <laughs> And just a reminder, you don't have to purchase any of the books. When you purchase the Robinson curriculum, you get all of the PDF files. The easiest way to print them is just duplex, front and back, 
full size, put them in a binder, done. I do have other tutorials if you wanna make it a little bit more fancy with the whole prong, you know, booklet style format. Uh, but if you don't want to print and bind, there are lots of alternatives for this title because it is such a classic, it's so popular. Like I said, this one was from Barnes & Noble. I got this whole collection off of Amazon. So I will leave links for great reprints that I vetted down below as well. All right, so number 62 is Uncle Remus and His Friends. This is by Joel Chandler Harris, and this is under the category of social studies. Now, we've already went into depth when it comes to the author, Joel Chandler Harris, and his backstory. It's really interesting. So I recommend that you go back and watch that first video when he was introduced, as well as I did a little clip of the controversial history of Uncle Remus. But just to give a little recap here, 1892 was the first edition, and this is a complete set here, so it has all of the stories, but particularly number two is Uncle Remus and his friends. And so that is the third collection of Uncle Remus stories. And they're very just well known for moralizing, short stories, and jolly songs. I'm pretty sure, I think I've seen this, there are more modern reprint versions that kind of soften up that Appalachian accent that could be a little bit tough to read. So they've kind of uh, fix that for more modern readers to make it easier. An audiobook of this, of the original, is a lot easier, I think, as well. Uh, but some people enjoy reading it and they can read it just fine. So I think maybe it just depends on kind of what area of the country you're in and different things like that. Now, because they do use in the book, for example, the N-word. Like I said, this was written in 1892 from a man that was around in the plantations and was documenting the stories that were passed down. So for parents who are not comfortable with that, I think the modern version just removes all of that. But even so, I wanted to give you some alternatives if you were interested. Uh, there is legends that every child should know. So if that's something you'd want to switch to and in it, it has stories like Hiawatha, Beowulf, um, the Seven Sleepers of Ephesus. Another substitute could be famous stories every child should know. This is by Hamilton Wright, maybe. And these are found in the public domain. So again, very easy to access them and you can just print them out. Again, it's really just up to your preference. So that is number 62, Uncle Remus and His Friends. All right, now moving on to number 63, it's the McGuffey's Fifth Reader. And I can't believe I forgot to pull it off the shelf. So Instead of interrupting the video, running downstairs and getting it, I'll just insert some B-roll footage right here. But this is under the category of language arts. This is part of the McGuffey's reader set. And maybe you didn't know that it went all the way up to the fifth reader. It didn't come in the little collection that I had. I had to buy this one separately. So just keep that in mind. Since 1836, children have been delighted by these volumes filled with exotic adventures, exciting stories, beautiful poems, and funny Fable. So the fifth reader includes selections from Washington Irving, which is another RC Bookless author, Daniel Webster, Charles Dickens, also another one, Samuel Johnson, and Bret Hart. The fifth reader begins with 27 pages of instruction and examples for reading and recitation as a rhetorical exercise, followed by 101 literature-based language arts lessons. So a lot of people use this as their language arts program. It's really fantastic. Here on the book list, they're just kind of reading through it. That's all they have to do. They don't have to do any extra things with it. It's up to you if maybe you want to assign some memory passages, some recitations. It gives me very um, Little House on the Prairie vibes because this is what they used, you know, and Laura would use to do her recitations as far as I know, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's really special and I think every kid should read it because it really has those strong connections to you know, America in the early days, especially early uh, schoolhouses, you know, this is what they used. So that's number 63, the McGuffey's fifth reader. I've purchased an older copy, but it is available with New West Press, my favorite book reprint, small family, home business, homeschooling family website. They have this one available on Amazon. So I will leave a link down below for that. All right, number 64 is volume one, part one of Picturesque America. And this is written by William Cullen Bryant. So there's a part one and a part two. 
This reprint is volume one. So as you can see, it is a pretty big book. They came out in 1872 and 1874. And what this book does is that it takes its readers through a tour of America through art and writing. It includes 65 essays written by various authors and was illustrated by 900 wood and steel engravings. It is considered to be one of the best and most thorough works on the history of America. So when people say, well, what about geography? What about all of that? They do get it from books as well. And this is one example of it, one excellent example. Now you can print this. I would recommend you print it because I have not found a reprint that is up to par. This one is one of those bad examples where the text is very teeny tiny. I mean maybe it looks okay to you and in case I didn't mention it already this is under the category of social studies. All right, number 65, I always have a hard time saying this, Gulliver's Bruh. Travels by Jonathan Swift. This is under the category of social studies and literature. Now, I will say that this book is one that I've seen parents uh, kind of have some issues with it. Uh, it just depends what you're comfortable with. It's a, obviously Gulliver going on travel. It's very sort of meant to be a satirical view of the European government. So there's themes in it of drunkenness and... Um, nudity, uh, I think your public urination, different things like that, as well as um, necromancy. I think that that's a big one that mm, some parents can be uncomfortable with, you know, but we'll talk about some alternatives in just a second, but no one can deny the success of it. It was an immediate success. It is universally, universally read from the cabinet council to the nursery. That's what it was said. In 2015, Robert McCrum released a selection list of 100 best novels of all time in which Gulliver's Travels was listed as a satirical masterpiece. You can go online and, and watch sort of like a quick eight minute summary that tells you, you know, exactly what the book was about, what his travels were about. I'll give you just some kind of fun facts here, interesting things. This was published seven years after Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, which is also on the RC book list. And so Gulliver's Travels may be read sort of as a systematic rebuttal of Defoe's optimistic account of human capability, because this is kind of very down and negative on humans, human nature, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. A possible reason for the book's classic status is that it can be seen as many things to many people, right? Broadly, the book has three themes, a satirical view of the state of the European government. We talked about that. And also it kind of makes fun of petty differences between religions. That's kind of the dig there. An inquiry into whether people are inherently corrupt or whether they become corrupted and a restatement of the older ancients versus moderns controversy previously addressed by Swift in the Battle of the Books. So just keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, some parents aren't thrilled with some of those literary themes. So some alternatives for you, possible substitutes. There is a more child-friendly version and I'll leave a link for it down below because it is in the public domain as well. So you can print that one out. Now the edited version by Balliet in 1900 cleaned it up pretty nicely. It removed all the inappropriate parts and also took out the last two sections, the last two chapters of the book completely, which was about sorcerers and necromancy, raising people from the dead. So those were completely omitted. So maybe you, you like this book, but not that subject matter. You can always get the child-friendly version. Obviously, it's up to you as the parents, whatever your preference is. Now, this is a hardback from New West Press, my favorite place to buy reprints. All of their reprints are the unabridged version. So just keep that in mind. This is the original here. All right, so that's the end of this little book chunk. Join me next month where we continue on the list. Let me know in the comments down below if these videos are helpful for you. And have you read any of these titles? Are any of them your favorites? Have you read Gulliver's Travels? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, don't forget to check out the robinsoncurriculum.com link down below. I have lots of videos videos on my channel as well if you're interested of this really sustainable, enjoyable way to homeschool. If you're looking for something like that, that is burnout friendly, no burnout zone, then please check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to connect with me live, I invite you to join me over at my private membership site called The Schoolhouse. 
There you will have access to all of my courses, RC Course for Little, Sustainable Homeschooling 101, and how to run your home like a franchise. You will also have access to weekly private YouTube lives where I can answer all of your questions in real time or that you previously submitted and you can always watch the replays. It's only $15 a month and you can cancel anytime. So I hope to see you there. Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I think you would really like this video starting off the book series in case you haven't uh, watched it already, but YouTube's algorithm thinks you would like this video instead. So whichever one you choose, I will see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye.